This video is going to demonstrate some of the key features of QImage 1 uh, as it relates to adding your thumbnails to the live view and arranging prints, resizing them, and getting everything laid out just the way you want. So let's start over here on the left. We've already selected a folder which contains some of our images and we have the thumbnails displayed on the side here. So we can go ahead and select a thumbnail by clicking on it and you see that it, it highlights. You can also make a multiple selection by using the shift or command keys. Then we can move over to the Prints tab over here. Now it may be that you have this Prints tab visible below the print settings. In this case, on the smaller screen, I have it next to the Printer Settings tab. So if I click on here, you can see I have an option of how many copies of this particular thumbnail I would like to add. I also have a list of all the print sizes that which are available. So this is the first way you can add a print to the Live View is simply by clicking on the print size you would like. And there we have our thumbnail that was selected over here and now you can see that it is being put on the center of the live view. If you prefer to pick your print size first you can do that. Let's go ahead and uncheck this thumbnail first Then I'm going to pick a 5x7 print from the list of sizes on the right here. You'll notice that on each thumbnail is a little plus button. If we click on the plus then that thumbnail we selected will be added to the live view with, with the print size that is selected over on the right. Another way you can add a print is again to pre-select a print size. I'm going to pick the 2 by 3 inch print. Now you can simply drag from the thumbnails onto the live view and you see this plus symbol appear. Now if I release, I get a 2 by 3 inch print added onto the live view. Now that we have some prints on the live view, we can talk about the way that QImage 1 arranges prints on the page. There are three layout options. First one is in Telespace. The second one we're using here is IntelliCenter, and then we also have the IntelliCut layout option. Now to show the difference between these three layouts, I'm just going to remove this bottom print here. And you can see that in the IntelliCenter option, the prints are grouped together in the center of the page where possible, and there is a quarter inch gap left between prints to make it easier to separate them once you have printed them. If you use IntelliSpace, the prints uh, still have a gap between them, but now they're arranged towards the top of the page. This is especially useful if you're using roll paper and you want to try and preserve as much uh, paper as you can from the roll. And finally, we have IntelliCut. This will arrange all the prints on the page, leaving no gaps. This uh, makes the most use of the paper, and you should use this if you want to group a lot of images together and you don't really care about having a spacing between them. Once prints have been added to the live view, you can still resize them. Uh, maybe you like the print to look a little larger than you thought it was going to look, or you want just a different arrangement. The way to do this is first to select the prints. So you can uh, select any print just by clicking on it, and you see it gets this outline around the outside. And again, just like the thumbnails, you can use Command and Shift to make a multiple selection. So I'll hold down Command, and I'll click on this. Now both prints are selected. So with print selected, the print size now is a resize function. It's no longer adding new thumbnails, but it's resizing which prints you have selected. So if I click on the 5x7 print size, for instance, you see that both prints are now resized. Now I'm just going to go back to the IntelliSend options. It's a little clearer to see. We can also resize prints manually if we want to get a very specific size. If I click on this print of the flower here on the top of the layout, and I move my mouse towards the corner, you can see this diagonal resize arrow appear. And then if I hold down the mouse button and I start to move, you can see that I get a dashed line showing me what size the print will be. And you can also see down on the bottom of the status bar the size that the print will be released when I let go. Now if I let go, I have the print has been resized to the new size. Notice also that QImage 1 has rotated the print because it can see that it can fit more prints on the page this way. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So in our list of print sizes we have some special sizes down here. Um, we have original size which will place the print um, at the actual original size it was designed if it came from something like Adobe Photoshop where the size is embedded in the print. And we also have fit to page and fit to paper and I'll show you the difference. With this image selected, if I click Fit to Page, QImage 1 will fit the whole image as best it can inside the printable area on the page. Now, Fit to Paper, if you notice, it just makes it a little more zoomed in. And the way it does that is it assumes, even if there are margins, it assumes it's trying to print that to the whole paper. 
this would be convenient for instance if, if an image had been scanned at a particular paper size and you needed to print it back that exact same paper size even if you had margins so just a quick note since we're talking about margins here notice that the the gray area here represents the full size of the paper while the the white area is the actual printable page some printers cannot print uh, within a certain distance of the edge of the paper some can they can print borderless so we show here that we have a page which is 8 times 10.685 inches that's the white area uh, this is using US letter paper so the actual gray box the, the larger box is the physical size of the paper which for US letter is 8.5 by 11 inches now QImage 1 comes preloaded with some standard print sizes but you're also free to make your own you could uh, add a print size you can uh, remove print sizes from the list you can completely customize this list using the edit key down here you can load sizes save them reset the sizes if you know you want to reset things back to the way they were when QImage 1 was first installed so let's see how that works that's going to add a new print size here and we'll make it say 6 by 6 inches and we'll call it a uh, six inch square we'll give it a name so we'll remember what it's used for and now you see the option is here so with my print size selected if I click on this it will be resized to six by six inches but wait a minute this is clearly not a six by six inch print so what has happened well this is a general problem when it comes to printing photographs you have a source image which you're trying to print and it has a certain aspect ratio that's it has a certain width and a height and the box that you're trying to put it into to print in this case is a square the two don't match so what do you do in this case QImage 1 by default will keep all of the image you won't lose any of your information and it will put it inside of a 6 by 6 inch box at the right ratio that means that the actual print size here ends up being 6 by 4 and a half inches now what if you really want to have a 6 by 6, six inch square print well you can do that by clicking on the auto crop button down here the little scissors icon if I click on this I now have a 6 by 6 inch print but you notice that the petal got cut off here on the left hand side that's because QImage 1 has now taken the basically cut a square like a cookie cutter out of the middle of this print maybe we want to have the flower which is towards the left of the image inside of our square well the way we do that is we just right click and select crop prints and this opens the cropping editor now you can see the uh, color image in the center shows you what is currently being cropped and if you if you hover over the black areas here you see what's being removed now we can change this crop just by holding down the cursor and dragging the crop to the left and releasing and now you notice that we have the entire flower in fact I, I think I went a little bit too far I'm going to slide it back a little now the flower is centered within our cropping area notice now that we have what we just chose in the previous screen on the actual print on the live view now the auto crop feature can be used on a print by print basis or you can leave it on if you want it for every print that you add from now on so if this thumbnail is selected over here for instance if I were to click on a 3 by 4 print size I will get the auto cropping because it was already on if I click on here you see that this image is exactly 4 by 3 inches and it has been auto cropped to exactly fill that print size now we've talked about resizing prints and the different layout modes but what if you want to have fine control over exactly where the prints are laid out well you can do that simply by holding a print and dragging it you'll see that the print will move to a new position this enables what is called freehand mode which is indicated by the little uh, hand down here and when it lights up that means that this page is now in freehand mode it means that you have taken responsibility for organizing the prints and QImage 1 will not try to automatically put them into one of its layout modes now you can have a print job of multiple pages and each page can independently be freehand or QImage 1 will use its layout mode to arrange the prints for you now if you move prints on top of one another uh, you can change their order if I wanted the flower to be on top I just right click you can say I have options to bring forward send back bring to the top or the bottom and that is updated right here now since this page is freehand if I go to add a new print uh, for instance like this notice that it goes to the second page that's because QImage 1 will not automatically add new prints 
to any page which is in freehand mode. Well, what if I really want a new print on page one? I can do that by using the similar to where we dragged a print earlier, but now if I hold down the command key, I can drag a print explicitly onto a freehand page, and then I can continue to move it around and change its order and so on. I mentioned earlier in the video that I would talk about how QImage1 lays out prints on the page. Let's select some thumbnails here, and we will add these four thumbs as 4 by 6 prints. This creates two pages. This is page 2, and this is page 1. QImage1 has tried to put as many 4 by 6 prints as it can on this page. It has sophisticated algorithms which will calculate the best way to organize the prints for you. This is good if you are trying to make the most of a larger piece of paper to print multiple smaller prints. But perhaps you don't want Humage on to do this. Perhaps you always want to have two 4x6s on a page, rotated, like the cat picture at the bottom here. Now the way you can do this is you can select one of the prints and you can change its rotation with the two left and right rotate icons down here. So if I click on this one, this image will now rotate. Now the cats have changed. So I'll pick this image, rotate again, go to page two. Now the print's rotated this way. This could get a little tedious if you had to do this over and over again. Well, fortunately you don't have to. So let's start over, remove everything. If we turn on this uh, little icon down here, this is the image rotation lock. And this means that when QImage1 adds prints to the live view, it will not rotate them. It is not allowed to. This would make sense if you wanted to have your prints always oriented the same way as they are in the thumbnails. So now when I click the 4x6 print size, notice that I get two images on page 2 and two images on page 1. And they all have this rotation lock, sorry, not rotation lock, this little rotation indicator if I click on this, I can remove the rotation. I can also right click on the prints and set the ro print rotation explicitly like this. One final feature I want to show, which is related to how QImage1 lays out prints on the page, is the ordering prints. So let's remove all these prints again. And now I'm going to add a variety of different sizes. I might start with a very small print, and then I might go a little bit larger and add one of these. Now you notice that we have space up here and we have a space up here which is not being used. Now you could rearrange these in freehand mode, but if you want to ensure that QImage1 will always arrange the prints so that the, the larger ones come first, you know, that way you get all the large prints together than the smaller ones, it has a better chance of fitting everything to optimize the use of the paper. All you have to do is click down here to order the prints and now you see that it fits much better on the page and if I wanted to I could add another small print down the bottom. I hope you found this video useful and I hope that you have fun trying out some of the different ways QImage1 can combine your images on the live view to make some great looking prints.